Hey everybody, it's Peter from Brain for Kia and welcome to our live video series. Today we're gonna have some fun. We're gonna go a little bit back in time, but just one year. Technically, it's probably a little bit over a year. And we're gonna talk about two kind of identical vehicles that are totally different. So we're gonna talk about the 2019 Kia Soul EV. We're gonna compare it to the 2020 Kia Soul EV. And we're gonna talk about what's better on both because they each have their advantages. And uh, so that's gonna be fun today. Before we get into it, if you're just watching us and you're not watching live, uh, let me show you how to join us live. Every weekday at two o'clock, two o'clock Eastern time, we go live on the internet. Yes, it's only 159, but you know what? I always jump on a 159, you guys just don't know that. That allows me to do this. If you refresh the page, so if you go to our YouTube page, you're probably already on it, search for Brand for Kia at uh, two o'clock. If you refresh the page, one of two things is gonna happen. You're gonna see a live video appear in front of you like that right there, or if I'm running a little bit late, you might have to click the videos tab right here, and then the very first video out there, you'll see this little live now tab. So if you just click that live now tab, you will see us live. What I'm gonna do is just jump out of here. Uh, let me just sort of zoom in a little bit, scroll it across. I need to make it as big as I can, because what's gonna happen is for me, this will be on the big screen. All right, if you're just joining us, uh, jump into, uh, sorry, if you're joining us and you're not live, skip ahead to the three minute mark. That's when we'll really get going with things. Uh, just gonna let our audience build for a second here. Uh, those of you that don't know us here at Brantford Kia, we talk about EVs a lot. We are a leader in EVs. We've always followed them since they came out. Uh, we've sold a bunch of them. We actually sold more Kia Nero EVs before they came out than anybody else in the country. So we, uh, we take it seriously. We think of ourselves as leaders in this because uh, we've taken the steps necessary to become leaders. And hopefully we'll be sort of a knowledge-based leader and we're certainly a sales, uh, uh, we certainly work on being a sales leader. So that's kind of our history with EVs. Uh, those of you that don't know me, uh, you should probably know that I drive one of those. So we'll talk about which one I drive in a couple minutes here. Uh, but I'm a big fan of EVs myself. Uh, I ha also am a fan of gasoline vehicles. I'm not a one or the other. I think they both are very good. And uh, I would love it if everybody drove EVs, but I don't think that's practical for everybody right now. And I'm fine with that. So uh, yeah, we're going to talk about EVs. This particular one in front of me is going to disappear about an hour from now. So I have it for the next uh, half an hour, maybe 40 minutes. If we have some good questions, we'll go into the 40 minute mark. And if at any point we can earn your like in this video, do me a favor, hit that like button. Uh, just uh, let my bosses know that you like what we're doing. And it also helps us. Of course, you know how this works on YouTube. More likes is better for us. If I can earn your subscription as well, I'd love to do that. We talk about uh, cars a lot. We're going to start doing a little bit more diverse videos again. We kind of got uh, going stuck with the uh, a lot of live videos, but we're going to start diversifying things up again soon. So that'll hopefully be exciting. And yeah, hopefully I can earn that. So here we go. We are three minutes into the video. So let's launch it up. So what have we got? 2019 Kia Nero EV. This is what was called an EV luxury. Now we have an EV Limited. So technically these are both the top of the line EVs of their time. Now, to be fair, what I should have done is pulled in an EV Premium, it would have competed. Uh, <laughs> we had a little debate on, uh, on Instagram earlier today about uh, somebody thought this was gonna be a green versus gray uh, video. So we decided, okay, for a half an hour, we're just gonna decide which one's better, green or gray. Technically, this is in gray. This is actually called Titanium. And uh, it is a cool, yeah, so I thought it was Aaron, yeah. There we go, so this is uh, technically called titanium. It does look very gray in this video. It actually changes color quite a bit in the sunlight. So I used to own a car of this color and I uh, quite liked it. It's nice and easy to keep clean and uh, yeah, you can see it's quite nice. So we're gonna talk about a little bit of the differences of these cars. Uh, we're also gonna talk about um, some things I like about the previous generation that they should have put into the current generation but did not. And uh, we're also gonna talk about why the new ones are better because they are better. The new ones are definitely a better vehicle but I don't think that's a reason to not buy this car. So James and I were talking, James is one of our salespeople. He also drives an EV uh, regularly. Him and his uh, wife have one. And uh, we were saying that this car in front of us, this 2019 model is kind of the perfect second vehicle. And I totally agree with that. I think uh, if you are looking to move to an EV, uh, picking up one of these used might be a great idea. It's got about 179 kilometers of range. That's what it was rated for in the beginning. And, um, that range is really right around that number, 179. You can squeak out a little bit more. You're gonna get less in the winter for sure. But if you use it as your second car, there are very rarely times where you drive more than 100 kilometers a day on your second car. And uh, of course you can charge it right in your own home. So this does give you a lot of advantages that way. You'll never do another oil change. And uh, they're just nice to drive. They're really great to drive. This car here, you guys will know that I'm a big fan of our current long range models. 
Uh, this one is rated for 383 kilometers. You're going to see in a minute when I get in, it's, uh, it's actually sitting around 450 plus kilometers right now. And that's typical. So uh, in this type of weather, this warmer weather. Uh, so really you're talking about a huge difference in range. And when we talk about range anxiety, that really, that term originated with the vehicles like those. 179 was class leading range back then. And uh, really, you know, you go 120 kilometers, you're starting to look for a, a charge station. Whereas this one, you can go, you know, in real world use, I have customers that have gone 300 kilometers and said, you know what, we'll just go another 100 kilometers and hit that next charge station. So real big difference in range. Uh, in my mind, these cars for many, many people is a direct replacement for a gasoline vehicle. Whereas the second car behind us, the, the used car, it is something that you could replace a gasoline vehicle with, but for many people, they're not ready to make it their primary vehicle, and that's perfectly fine. There are people that have and that do, and I think they're satisfied with that choice, but you do have to ask yourself some questions about what kind of sacrifices you may want to make, um, and keeping in mind that range when it lowers in the winter uh, does get uh, to be an issue because you're now dealing with the lower 100 numbers of range, whereas the, uh, even in my short-range Kia Soul, which we'll talk about in a little bit, it's rated for 248, but I never went below 200 kilometers of range, even in the coldest of winter days that were slushy roads. So that's just something to keep in mind. So we're going to take a look inside. Let's jump right in, take a look at the differences right here. Uh, many of my regulars have already seen the 2020. So we're going to jump into the 2019, and we're going to talk about a few things I like and some things that we've maybe improved upon. First thing I want to show you, the number one thing that they should have kept in the new soul is this. That is a panoramic roof. Now, cameras never do this justice. It is the entire roof, pretty much. Over your rear seats, you've got uh, light. Over the front seats, you've got light. And it is a full-width sunroof. Before I jump in, let's just compare what that looks like in the new one because while we're here, we'll get the same angle. It's just not the same. I didn't open it up. Let's do that. It's just not, not the same. They should have kept it. They didn't. And that's fine. You know what? It is what it is. But man, was that nice in the older ones. So one thing I liked about the older one was definitely that sunroof. Another couple of things that are different. Uh, this one has parking sensors front and rear. You can see these little uh, circles right there. Those parking sensors are on the, like I said, front and rear. They just beep progressively quicker as you approach an object and uh, kind of a nice touch. So, you know, something to think about. What you didn't get in this luxury model, it was called luxury model, was powered seats. You do have that on the, uh, on the Kia Soul, on the driver and passenger side. Let's jump in, take a look inside. Kia Soul stuff, you kind of see the typical Kia Soul stuff here. I'm just going to scroll around the door panel for a second. The older Kia Souls, they were square on the outside, they were round on the inside. A lot of round details there. A keyhole look that's kind of mirror imaged on the back door. You've got the uh, tweeter speakers there. You've got a little circular detail there with the little charge lights up there. Everything was kind of rounded. Even the radio system was kind of rounded out. So um, we're going to talk about that in a second, but let's take a look inside the dash first. This is what the dash looked like. Now, one thing they did right here, the speedometer is a larger number than the range number. And in my opinion, that's what you need. You need to see your speedometer every second. Range number is not going to matter until you run low, but you do want to be aware of it. And again, in this car, it's around 100% or so. It's at 166, just based on the way people have driven it. it you can squeak out more of this, uh, more on this car than that. But again, rated for 179 when it's brand new. And you can see that Eco Level 4. Let's just zoom into that for a second. That's how this car has been driven recently. And um, that, that's out of eight. So when you drive it at Eco Level 8, that's the maximum efficiency. And uh, sometimes that alone can contribute to a range difference in some of these numbers. But realistically, 179 is what you can expect in this car. Um, and it is going to be less in certain conditions. I, you know, I think I've driven one of these about, uh, we've seen 200 plus a couple times. But real world actual driving, yeah, 179, 150, 140 to 179 is pretty common. 140 to 180 is pretty common stuff. And if that works for you, and again, if this car is 10 years old, you may have a little bit of uh, degeneration in that battery. But if that kind of number works for you, this might be a perfect car for you. And that's really what it is. It's an around town car. It's capable, capable of highway speeds. But of course, you're looking at about an hour and a half of range and you're depleted if that range is true and that means perfectly no wind. The newer cars are a little bit more accurate in the range on highway speeds. So uh, just something to keep in mind. If you're doing 120 in this car, you're not going to do 166 kilometers right now. So uh, just something to keep up. Down here, cruise control, but not smart cruise control. You've got sort of the older generation of con uh, controlling your menus in the center there. So again, same type of look in the new car. You'll see these menus across the top there. These ones right above my finger. Sorry about my wrinkly finger there. Come on. So focus again. Let's go. 
Let me jump back out. There we go. Jump back in. You'll see some of the same icons there. Sorry about the focus there, guys. We'll get that better in a minute. Yeah, there we go. The icons up top. Similar look, but a different way to control it. So these are the two icons here. We'll show you that in a difference. One interesting thing is these cars had a steering mode button, and all it is is steering comfort mode, or steering mode, comfort, normal, and sport. So you could change the way the steering felt, but it's not actually uh, a drive mode, so per se. It's just the way the steering feels. Bluetooth controls are over here. They were nice and easy to, read, easy to work. And your audio controls are over there. Automatic headlights is to be expected. They were HID headlights, I believe. Uh, you know what? We'll find out. They are projector beam. I don't know if they're HID. I might have to correct myself on that. I haven't uh, fully studied this in this way I should have. Over here, you had the big 8-inch screen. That was a big deal back then because that was only in the Kia Stinger and some other uh, cars. So you had the full-size Kia Soul screen, which was quite nice. The backup camera is top-notch in this car. You can see there, you can see every line in the floor if you look carefully, and I'm filming this. So they are halogen. There we go. Somebody jumped in and told me they're halogen lights up front. Yeah, that makes sense. Anyways, the backup camera, you can see every line on the floor, very clear camera. Really, that's the same size as what I have in the new car because the new car is a 10 and a quarter inch screen, but they only give you uh, two thirds of that screen for a backup camera. So nothing wrong with that, works fine. Fairly easy to use software, although there is a new improved software in the new car. We'll talk about some of that. One thing you had in here, which was a big hit at the time, they kept wanting us to tell people about it was, let me see if I can find it exactly. Nope, there's a circle of range. We can talk about that later. Uh, where is it here? Nope. Nope, those are nearby stations. We don't want that. There was a little um, eco drive, and there we go. There's my tree. So that tree was, oh, this is the big thing, guys. They, they told us all about this, and that tree will get progressively filled out as your eco level goes higher in your energy consumption. So, um, yeah, that was just the big thing, and it wasn't super popular with people because I think most EV drivers don't want to watch a tree. They want to just drive. So uh, kind of an interesting thing, just so you can show it to your friends, but it gets old quick, and that's okay. One thing I do like, three levels of rump roasting, three levels of seat ventilation as well. So seat heaters and seat ventilation. Uh, no powered seats in this car, like I mentioned, but you do have that ventilation. And on this leather uh, seat, that was quite nice. And actually, I believe this was artificial leather back then as well. The current one is leather. Uh, coming down here, you still had a driver-only mode, which could save you. How much range can it save you? Uh, nothing. So it was a nice way to put all of your climate control to us or to the driver. But if I tap the button again right now, yes, no change. Oh, hold on. Let's go. Yeah, 157. Yep, no change. So there we go. No real uh, benefit to that driver only mode, which is consistent with our current cars. You can focus range. It might save a kilometer or so on the new cars, but it's not worth boiling or freezing your passengers to do. Uh, scrolling down here, you did have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto available uh in this car i'm 90 percent sure let me just double check yes android Auto, apple carplay there we go and you can plug that in through right here you had 12 volt ports on either side so you'll see some differences in the new car as well and uh a traditional gear shift on this car which was a big deal a lot of ev type things had funky looking gear shifts and they uh always told us oh yeah this is a sort of a traditional way to drive interesting no real drive modes in this car but you could put it in drive and then if you wanted to go to the b mode that B gave you extra regenerative braking, kind of like braking down a hill, that kind of thing. Uh, so that it does have it does have that extra regenerative braking, but it was mostly people drove and drive, and that was sort of for occasional use. We'll show you the differences in the new car. Active eco button, same sort of thing, gives you a little bit extra regenerative braking, dulls the throttle a little bit, uh, can help with the range a little bit. But um, yeah, whoops, I'm still uh, in gear. Put it back in park. I'm used to doing these vehicle these videos when we're uh, when we're parked. Or sorry, when the car is off, but of course these EVs I can run. So there we go. A power button's down here. I don't know if you can see it. There we go. Get some shade on there. And uh, that is consistent with Kia Souls with a push button start. So take a good look again around and see what we've got. Auto headlights. We'll show you the outside in a second. Now let's jump right into the new car. I'm going to turn this one off because this one is going out in a little bit. When you hit park in this car, the electronic parking brake actually turned on right away. So that is a something that they didn't do anymore, uh, and I don't think that's a problem. I think that uh, makes sense that the owner chooses when the parking brake's used. In here, a lot of differences. Not only is it powered seat, it's got lumbar adjustment. Those parking sensors, just because I talked about them the last time, they're not available on the Soul. They are available on the top of the line Nero EV. So if you really want them, you just got to move to the Nero instead of the Soul, and that's not the end of the world. 
Turn the car on. I should mention availability. The car that I'm sitting in right now, this is a EV Soul uh, Luxury. We have both the long range, which is this one, and the short range, which is the premium, in stock. You can take them home today kind of thing. Maybe not today anymore because it's the afternoon, but the point is um, you can get these cars and take them home. The um, Nero is going to be a little bit longer wait. just seems that uh, the Nero is, has some interest, especially in Europe. Uh, so that is a car that is a little bit longer wait uh, globally. And uh, we can get one for you if that's what you prefer, but just be prepared to wait a little bit. Whereas if you want to take an EV home today, tomorrow, we can do that. <laughs> we have some customers that say, yeah, it's worth the wait. I like the Soul. I don't know why everybody's so hard on the Soul. Anyways, if you look in here, similar size uh, font. I think it's the same font between your range and your speedometer. And I don't think you need to do that anymore, but Kia chose to do that, and that's fine. In the center, you can see that big screen is a big display screen, a seven inch display screen in there. And it is color. It's very, very clear. That may be tough to show. I did mention those icons along the top, right along there. Uh, those icons are now controlled by a little different set of uh, controls, which are right here, the menu button there, and this up, down, and okay in there. So we'll talk about the cruise control in a minute. Let's scroll over to our big screen. Here is the big screen. I quite like the big screen. So you can see we have an updated nav. You may not notice that just looking at this picture. Uh, it is a better navigation system than we had in the past, and you get 10 years of free updates. Throw the car in reverse, and remember I said the backup camera is the same size? Yeah, same size. You can still see the lines on the floor. You have ability to adjust on the fly, so they don't take advantage of that 10 and a quarter inch screen for the backup camera, um, other than you have some area to do some things there uh, to adjust the contrast and the brightness and those kinds of things, which is sometimes helpful to do on the fly, although I don't think I've ever really touched mine for backing up. Climate control, same thing down here. Um, same idea exactly. EV button just sends the information to the uh, big screen if that's what you want to see. Uh, driver only mode, same thing. This one does save you maybe a kilometer or so. Uh, not something that's totally necessary. So just keep in mind, again, don't freeze your customers or boil or freeze your guests or boil your guests because you want the driver only to save range. It won't save enough. Down here, you have a USB port instead of a 12 volt port. Only one 12 volt port now, which I think makes sense. Android Auto and Apple CarPlay through the USB port and wireless charge pad. Over here, you have a dial star style gauge. Uh, works very simply. Put it in drive like that put in reverse like that, put in park by pushing the button. Uh, works very, very well, simple. Same thing here, three levels of seat heaters, rump roasters as I like to call them, and three levels of ventilation. Heated steering wheel is in both cars. I didn't show you the other one. Heated steering wheel is on this side here. It's buried uh, on the other side, sort of behind the steering wheel. You can see it though. And you do have drive modes in this car. In this car, we'll talk about the power in a second when we get out. But interior-wise, it is a step up. Um, leather seats in this one, leather seats in that one. Uh, you have a little bit better controls. Regenerative braking, you have paddles that can control it, and your drive modes can control it. Uh, we'll talk about that a little bit later in the video. I'm going to take your questions in a minute. So if you have questions, feel free to jump in and ask them right away. Um, but you do have control over regenerative braking that you didn't have uh, in the previous model. And I think that changes the way it drives. We're also going to talk about power. Big thing in this car, you get lane keep assist, blind spot detection. Uh, actually, I'm not sure. Yeah, no, no. Yeah, blind spot detection wasn't in the other one. And avoidance, lane keep assist, uh, lane follow assist. Uvo intelligence is the big, big thing as well. You can see there's some buttons on the mirror right there. Uh, those uh, are available in any car with Uvo, Uvo Intelligence. The big thing you get, though, is a cell phone app. And when you get that cell phone app, um, I think it's more useful on an EV than on any other car we have. And, um, yeah, exactly. The auto setting, we can assume it has the auto setting for regenerative braking. Yes. So mechanically, same thing. You have an auto setting for regenerative braking here where you don't on this car. We can talk about that as well. Uh, but the Uvo Intelligence, that cell phone app, is really, really useful on an EV because you can sit in your living room, sit in your basement, you can check your charge status, you can control some of those things. Um, you know, in addition to locking your doors, doing that kind of thing, setting the climate from your phone, those are super helpful. Uh, but uh, yeah, kind of a fun app, especially for the EVs. All right, we're gonna look at lighting. We're gonna take a look at the rear seat space, front seat space. Both these cars are almost the exact same length within an inch or so. Uh, they are the exact same uh, width to the millimeter, very similar height, neither one has roof rails. So uh, they should be similar to sit in, but they're not. So we'll talk about that in a second. We'll look at the lighting in a second. And uh, first of all, I'm just gonna jump to your questions, see if there's anything I missed here. Let me just jump over here. I bored you all. So somebody say it's 235 kilometers on a full charge with a 19 solar EV. So that's, that's true. You can get uh, more range. Some of our customers are getting as high as 
For instance, 235 was just mentioned. Uh, my driving experience, having driven both, is that would be the very, very high end of this car. Uh, like I said, squeaking over 200 is possible, and uh, it's not you know terribly difficult if you drive a little bit efficiently. But keep in mind, highway speeds, cold temperatures, the car in front of me, the 2019, is a little bit more pessimistic in the range. It's uh, pretty good. Yeah. So my boss wants to know, how do they compare to Lexus? So here's the thing. The other day, I did a Lexus versus a Kia. And let's be honest, the Kia had features that Lexus didn't. I just was doing a service to Lexus buyers so that they know. And uh, I received some very choice language and sort of a death threat. So if anybody feels that upset about this video, um, don't be. <laughs> Maybe don't comment like that. <laughs> so anyways, real fun we had here this morning passing that uh, comment around. But um, don't take my words too seriously. If you prefer one car or the other, just tell me and we'll talk about it. We can deal with it. We can walk you through this. All right. Okay, so let's jump through. We're going to compare sizing of these two cars. Uh, we're going to talk about lighting. And I want to also talk a little bit about the differences in power because that's the real difference in this car. Uh, both the amount of power they make, the way they put it down, uh, the way they drive, and of course range is the big thing as well. And we'll talk about the benefits of that. We're going to do all that in the next 10 minutes. So let's get going. At the 30 minute mark, we will uh, go back to questions again. We'll take your questions. Rear seat space. So uh, this Kia Soul, this is the 2019. How does the phone apps connect to the car? So if you're talking about Uvo intelligence in the previous car, uh, that car is set up for it. We'll just set you up when you buy the car and uh, you just sign into an app on your phone. Uh, this one here, if you're talking about Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, again, we just pair that through your phone and uh, that's how that works. Let me jump into the rear seat of the 2019 car. I did spend time to set the driver's seat exactly where I need it. And there's two things you're gonna notice when you jump in the back seat of any Soul EV. Your knees are gonna be higher. So let me just show you there. The floor is a little bit raised on these cars because the battery's underneath and your knees sit a little higher than a gasoline sole. Um, not terribly uncomfortable, but just a little bit different. This particular car, my knees happen to be a little bit more off the, let me just see if I can show you that. A little bit more off the um, seat than they would be in a, in a gasoline sole. Headroom's pretty good. Uh, soles are always great for headroom. This one's got a sunroof, so that's gonna rob a little bit of headroom. But again, I'm about six feet tall and I'm quite comfortable back here. Uh, let's just check out knee room. And uh, I should mention that commenter also commented on my bald head. And I happen to think my bald head makes me kind of cute. So I'm just going to throw that out there since my boss is watching now and he sees what we're doing. All right. Knee room. Again, I have enough. Uh, sole has always been very good for space. Losing a little bit of floor space means you put your knees in a different position here. But again, I'm quite comfortable in this car and I can fit in it. You do have uh, netted pads or netted pockets on each uh, seat back. And there is a hard plastic on the back here, which I'm a huge fan of. It's easy to wipe down if you've got kids uh, with their feet that may touch it. As far as ports go, you guys always like to ask what ports in the back. This particular car has no ports right back here, no vents back here. Something to keep in mind. What they do have, though, is, and like I said, it's sort of an interesting mix of options. No powered seats, but you have the heated and ventilated seats. In this car, you have heated rear seats here. Two levels of seat heating. I haven't got the car on right now, but you can see two little lights there. So you have re heated rear seats. So there's the rear seat in that one. Let's check the rear seat in this one. We'll flip the camera around. I'll show you how easy it is to get in. Ooh, that's my chin. That's not there. There we go. Jumping in, no problem. Keep the door open for extra light. Same thing, more headroom here for sure. Part of that's probably just because there's no uh, panoramic sunroof. Uh, but again, same basic size of cars. I will say down here, if you look at my knees, I don't know if you can see them. Come on, camera. I'm closer to the seat here. I'm a little more comfortable. My knees are less up than they were before. But again, this floor is higher than the current model Kia Soul. Let's flip around and look at my knees compared to the front seat. Open the door here and get some extra light in. I have significantly more room. So again, same basic length of cards, but an inch or so difference, but a lot more room. So a little bit more room in the sole uh, overall in the 2020, but still very comfortable. Down here, there is a port right there, a USB port, which you can see lit up right there. So you do have ports in the back and heated seats, same idea exactly. Just the seat bottoms of the rear seats in both of these cars, not the seat backs. Uh, but again, same type of button, same type of space there. Uh, one thing that's different in this sole, you'll see, I didn't bring my teddy bear in just because I wanted to leave him out. Usually I use a teddy bear to measure seats. They both have this panel above here on the limited models. This one happens to have its uh, floor mats in here. This trunk here, little tiny bit of underfloor storage there, but this trunk uh, panel, the floor panel, can move up and sit on this rail here very quickly. And that you can see that creates a lot of extra depth when you drop it, drop it down, which is especially handy if you happen to have this cover. The premium model that I drive doesn't have that cover. The Luxury does, or the Limited does, excuse me. The Luxury is this one. What they did in the previous sole 
seems to be just a slight bit smaller opening and I'm not sure if that's true or not. Cargo net, does the cargo net come with the EV? You know what, it didn't come with mine. I'm not 100% sure if it comes with this one. I think the Nero does have it. I don't think the Soul does, but it does have tie downs for that cargo net. So we could get one in there. Parking sensors, not on the current model, but they are on this model. If you want parking sensors, you gotta go to the Nero. Why did they remove them? I don't know. Why did they remove the panoramic sunroof? Uh, they do have the parking sensors on the EV Nero, if that's what you're looking for. This underfloor storage, again, you can see the charger sitting there. This one has a little styrofoam tray, so you can't drop the floor like you can in the current model, but you do have underfloor storage. Personally, I thought I would prefer this better, but now that I've gotten used to having my car with a floor that drops, I think that's a better use of space. But again, that's up to you what you think. Um, dying to see it in the US, yeah, exactly. Well, come to Canada, time to move to Canada. Both cars do have USB port, or sorry, a 12 volt port in the back of the car. And you can see LED lighting there, a nice white LED light. Can I start the AC or heat from inside a mall if you wanted to? Oh yeah, that's right, you can start the AC. Yeah, so if you're inside the mall, if you're anywhere where your cell phone gets signal, whether it's on, um, whether it's on uh, Wi-Fi or otherwise, you can absolutely uh, preheat or pre-cool the car. Uh, so that Uvo Intelligence app is pretty nice. All right, I wanna talk real quickly about power, horsepower. So there are two 2020 uh, Kia Souls. This one here, is the top line, it has 201 horsepower and 291 foot-pounds of torque, so pretty good power. There is also the same torque, 291 foot-pounds, but 139 horsepower, so 139 or 201. This car came with 109 horsepower and, oh, I had it memorized, I think it's 200 and, oh, oh 201 foot-pounds of torque, no, hold on, bear with me, I had it memorized and now it already slipped my mind. 210 foot-pounds of torque. So 210 foot-pounds of torque. The new ones have 291, no matter what you do. Exactly, so here's what I was thinking. Somebody, Leroy jumped ahead of me. He said, 109 horsepower, yikes. Here's the thing with horsepower, guys. Um, even though your cars have horsepower, your gas horsepower, that is so slow. Actually, it's not. So torque is the power you feel. Uh, that's what gets you going. Most of the time, you're not at peak horsepower unless you're at full speed in your gasoline car and you're at that certain amount of rev. Your car only makes its peak horsepower at a certain amount of revs if it's a gas car. In an electric car, you have peak torque all throughout. So you have a lot of quick peak torque instantly. As soon as I touch the gas on this car, even, so let's just compare it to a Kia Stinger. I touch the gas on this car, I'm instantly jolted forward with 291 foot-pounds of torque. Kia Stinger, I floor the gas. It's gotta spend a half second downshifting and then build the revs before it's at its peak horsepower or peak torque. So this car feels incredibly quick. This car is still pretty quick. That 109 horsepower, you can kind of throw away horsepower numbers in the, um, in the Soul. Now, not that I'm racing BMWs and I really don't want to tick off any more luxury car makers, but um, I may have come across a BMW um, 135 the other day and I blitzed him with my 139 horsepower and his 200 and whatever horsepower. Uh, because the instant torque on these cars reacts so very quickly. So uh, torque matters in an EV, horsepower matters a lot less. Uh, these cars are limited at their top speed. I don't believe this car goes much above 140. I'll have to double check that. But again, horsepower is not something you have to worry about. Can the EV use other rims? Let me just see what your question was. Sorry, I missed that one. Uh, can the EV use other rims? Yes, absolutely. So we'll talk about that in two seconds. So I wanna say power-wise, the new car has significantly more power. That being said, this car would feel like a faster Kia Soul than the current the Kia Souls of its time. So don't consider it to be slow because of horsepower because it has so much more torque, 210 foot-pounds of torque. So a lot more like the turbo model, but again, that's instant torque, whereas the turbo would have to build revs to get to that torque. Pretty low on the revs on the turbo, but there you go. Uh, difference driving, uh, this one again, more power and more range. Charge times, let's talk charge times. You have a little different uh, connection on this car. Six or so hours to get that 179 kilometers of range. That car would be nine hours or so to get to the 383 rated range, which again, as you saw today, this car is sitting at 455. 450 is fairly common in this weather. Uh, my car is a better comparison apples to apples because mine has a smaller battery pack. Um, this one again, six hours to 160, 179 kilometers. Mine's about six hours to go 248, which again, in this weather, I'm seeing over 300 on a regular basis and I don't really baby my car too much. So 305, I think it was 307 on Saturday morning when I had it fully charged to do our trip that day. So um, again, charge time is not crazy fast. It's faster in mine only because you get more kilometers for the same amount of time. 
They are both available to quick charge. That has a better quick charge, again, that kind of thing. So there we go. We have an EV owner on right now. She gets 498 kilometers in her EV Nero, which is the same powertrain as that. So like I said, the, the newer cars, you get more real world range, uh, legit rated range, right around 500 or above for some of those uh, Nero owners. And uh, sole owners, again, 450, 480 is pretty common in, in the new one. So again, great car for around town, capable of highway speeds, but you're gonna be limited to short trips without charging quite a bit. Uh, these, and again, we talk about charge station availability. That was the whole thing. Range anxiety, the solution to range anxiety was having more charge stations. If you drive 120, 130 kilometers in this car, um, you're gonna have to find a, a charger, you know, obviously to make it home. Whereas this car, uh, in real world use, doing 200 kilometers and turning around coming home is quite practical in the long range ones, given the current weather. A um, couple little different technology differences. The luxury model here has a heat pump. They both actually have heat pumps. Um, my car does not have a heat pump, but I still outdo the winter range of this car. So kind of interesting technology. We can talk about that later. All right, let me jump to your questions again, and then we will continue real quick and we'll wrap it up. Oh yeah, we're gonna talk about rims. Let's talk about rims. So first of all, 16 inch rims on this one. That's what they look like. They were the same size no matter what trim. 17 inch rims on the uh, Kia Soul for 2020. Little different style. Interestingly, these are actually plastic details and that is actually a copy of this over here. Let me just show you. Both those rims, the center pieces, the gray piece there and the shiny pieces there are uh, actually both plastic inserts. So they keep the weight down, they keep the aerodynamic look good. Um, I ended up with winter tires on mine that are mounted to these factory rims because the owner that bought this car wanted to throw on accessory rims. Uh, accessory rims will possibly weigh more. Uh, they could be less aerodynamic and they can affect range. Larger tires also affect range. That's why the early EVs had small uh, tires. And that's why, again, these are 17 inch. They're not small, but you can get 18 inch on the Kia Soul. So larger rims do affect range. Keep that in mind if you're swapping things around. You will not be able to downsize the tires for winter. They do need to be 17 inch uh, uh, wheels because you have uh, some good size brakes. Actually, the front may be able to downsize, but the rear brakes are still fairly large. We were playing around with a few of them and found that out the hard way. So uh, just keep in mind, you're looking for 17 inch rims on these. 16 inch rims are fine on the e Kia Soul. Uh, you may even be able to go to 15 on those. I'm not 100% sure. Some people I think may have, but uh, there we go. Regender braking, if we want to talk about that, I can, but we're at the 30 minute mark. Nobody needs brakes with an EV. I'm not allowed to say that though. You do need brakes. All right, is there any other questions on these two cars? If you have them, I'll answer them. I think what I'm going to briefly show you to finish off is the lighting and uh, we'll go from there. Let me just make sure I didn't miss anything that you had. Hope I had a good weekend. That was nice of you to say given how my morning started with uh, interesting things. Somebody wants to know, HED sunroof, auto closing and opening of rear view mirror. Um, so the rear view mirror, oh, okay. Well, these ones don't auto close, I don't believe. Am I wrong? Oh, they do, excuse me. Yep, they do auto close. So we can show you the old car. All right, the car's not on, give me one second here. Jump in, hit the power button. Let me just actually start it, there we go. When you have the, uh, this is one thing a lot of people are asking for. I, I don't miss it too much, but if I close this like that, I'm gonna hit that button. Those mirrors do fold in. So my mirrors on the current model, the 2020s, they do not fold in. You want folding mirrors, okay. I, you know, I'm, I, it's, it's kind of funky, I guess, but I don't miss them that much. A lot of people were more in love with that feature than I was, I guess. All right, what else we got? There was something else somebody asked. Uh, rear armrest, oh, is there no rear armrest? Yeah, there's a rear armrest in both the cars. Entry level thing, climate control, yep. So there we go. I think I covered it. Battery cooling difference between, 20, yeah, there is a battery cooling difference, absolutely. So the uh, temperature control system of that car's battery, the new car's battery, is absolutely better. Um, that's one of the things that were different. Uh, I'm gonna turn on all the headlights, but before I do that, I'll just show you this. So yeah, there is a, a difference in uh, batteries between these, uh, the temperature cooling is better in that car. Uh, it's, it's really about maintaining the same temperature. Um, as you charge the car and as you drive the car, the battery can fluctuate in temperature and that car is better at keeping it the same. And that's helpful for a lot of reasons, uh, including just predicting range. You do have LED lights up on this one. I'm just gonna show you those daytime running lights. They are on, I don't know if they're filming great, but these here are uh, LED daytime running lights. Same thing over here, very cool look on this one. Uh, I like the updated look here. Looks a little more modern. Those are actually quite bright, those little LEDs. But now we're gonna look at headlights and that's where there's a real difference here as well. Uh, the Kia Soul has, not just class leading lights, but really automotive industry leading lights. They're very, very bright and good. 
So we'll turn the lights on, fog lights on, and we'll do the full trip around both cars. Let me just, before I show you, get the lights on on all the cars so we can look at everything equally. Let me just turn the four ways on. Same thing here. Lights to on, four ways on. All right, let's take a look at both cars. So some similarities for sure. Obviously they're the same car. Sorry about swinging around there. Yeah, sorry, halogen lights. So obviously uh, I was wrong with that on, and we got corrected early on, but they are the projector beam headlights. And you'll see as I come down here, all of a sudden they get very bright and that's uh, excellent lighting. Separate bulb there for the LED, uh, or sorry, for the uh, H now, the projector beam high beam lights. Down here, projector beam fog lights. Again, that sharp cut off. So that's sort of the front end look there. Signal lights are LED as well. And they are nice, clear, bright. Over here, front lights, direct comparison. You move to full LED lighting, very white, very bright. Um, I don't know if you can tell the difference filming that. That flickering of that daytime running light is just the way it interacts with the camera, so don't worry about that. LED lights there, LED fog lights that again are extremely bright. Nice sharp cut off. I don't know if you can see the difference in the wall here, but there's the uh, LED lights cut off there. These ones are uh, fog lights you can see are quite sharp, but you can see the color difference in the fog lights for sure. They are sharp cut off because of projector beam, but the color difference, one is very white. It looks kind of greeny in the video, just the way the video is filming, but it's uh, definitely a difference there. Coming to the rear lights here, there is lights in both mirrors. New car looks like that. No LED signal lights on the back of either of these cars, but you do have LED brake lights, both filling it up. So there's your full tour. If you have any other questions, quickly ask them right now. We're gonna wrap the video up. I don't mind sticking around if you have some great questions, but uh, I don't wanna keep anybody from their job if uh, they got things to do. Again, this is the last time we'll see this car here for a while. If you're interested in a used Kia Soul EV, we'd be happy to chat with you, but currently this is the only one we have. They are a little bit rare. People seem to like them and keep them. Um, if you're talking about should you buy used or new, there's a whole bunch of benefits uh, cost-wise one over the other. Um, I quite like the tech in the newer model, which is why I bought the newer. I had the option of doing either one at the time. And uh, yeah, I'm going to echo our customer there. Uh, they said Brantford Kia has good support. If you're buying an EV, uh, without trying to go into a huge long explanation, just buy it from us. I have more people connect with me where their dealers are maybe uh, less informed or maybe just a little bit harder to find the information. Uh, buy from us. We've got not only is our sales team trained, our uh, techs are trained as well. So hopefully that can help you as well. Uh, let me just see. Somebody said something interesting and I kind of missed it. I heard 2021 has the option for a trailer hitch for bikes. Can it also pull? Um, okay, so I haven't heard 2021 for information yet. I haven't been given the true Canadian information yet. I would expect that they would make a trailer hitch option for accessories. I would expect it not to be rated to tow. Um, that's the short answer there. So um, we, there has been some requests for a trailer hitch uh, availability for especially things like bikes. Instead of throwing them on the roof, you can throw them behind the car. Uh, but I don't expect it to tow at all. Uh, 2020 version have what too? So electrode YT, does the 2020 version have what? And I will answer that for you. Oh, three-phase charging here in Austria. Okay, so yeah, the 2020 has, um, I don't know what we call it, but yeah, level one, plug it in the wall, level two, uh, the stage two, level two charger, and level three is that 80% in an hour. Both these cars can actually do uh, that 80% in about an hour or so. Uh, this one actually does 80% in less time. However, it is a uh, less range that we're talking about. My 2020 only takes a few seconds to charge most of the time. A few seconds, okay, that, you'll have to clarify that. You mean uh, quick charging. So there we go. Somebody really enjoys my presentation. Again, I appreciate that. Thank you for that. As opposed to the person who wrote me and was very upset with me for comparing a Lexus to a Kia. I wake up to fully charged battery. Yeah, exactly. So that's the thing too. Um, EV owners get used to a couple things. One, um, plug-in hybrids are great cars if you want to kind of switch halfway to EVs, but it's not fully halfway because you're doing all the maintenance that you would with a gas engine. Uh, what you end up with uh, with the um, EV is you go to bed, your car is fully charged in the morning. Or in my case, sometimes we just come home, plug it in. It's nice to walk out to your garage and go click, plug it in and forget about it. Your car sits so much. And the difference with EVs is when they sit, they charge. And uh, it's kind of nice. What time to catch up? Just tuned in. Uh, okay. Has a Lexus. <laughs> my boss is saving me from my threats earlier and he's talking about Lexus videos. So I appreciate. We've had some fun with this, these people. Some, like I said, if you're just joining us uh, late, we had some interesting aggressive comments that somebody was very frustrated with me. How dare I compare a Kia to a Lexus, which we did on Friday. Um, 
I quite enjoyed it and I stand by my thing. Buy the Lexus, it's a perfectly nice car. The Kia happens to have features that Lexus doesn't have and it's just a public service announcement to tell you that Kia has this many features and if you think your Lexus is better, it might not be better in some areas. All right, if you haven't given me a like, do me a favor, hit the like button for me. Uh, I've worked hard. I took a death threat this morning on YouTube comments, which is sort of par for the course, and that's why we're joking around about the Lexus thing. Uh, if that doesn't earn a like, I don't know what does. <laughs> uh, also, if we could have, uh, if you want to join us and subscribe to our channel, feel free. Uh, we have a lot more coming. We've got a pretty good year planned up ahead. When I say year, I'm looking at my next year already, so uh, it's going to be some fun. And uh, we will have some new information on cars coming soon. There was a marketing uh, video sent out about K5 stuff. They will give us K5 information soon. The second they have that, I'm going to go to you guys and talk to you about that. So the K5 is our next big thing we're looking forward to. And uh, there we go. So uh, hope that helps. And we will chat with you all again soon. Thanks everybody for watching. Let me just make sure I didn't miss a comment here at the end. No rear armrest. Somebody keeps saying no rear armrest. Uh, this car, both cars have a rear armrest. So I'm not sure... This is the luxury, so that one has a rear armrest right there, it's just not down. And the new cars also have rear armrests, so don't know if that matters to you, but uh, this is the top line version that has that, and there we go. All right, I think I got everything, there we go. Oh, not in the UK, there we go. Okay, we have them here. All right, thanks everybody for watching. We will see you again live tomorrow. I'm gonna figure out what I'm doing this week, and then I'm gonna take off next week. So if you have something you wanna do, let's make it a fun week and suggest it to me, because you'll have to go a week without me, and you'll all survive, I'm sure it'll be fine. Thanks everybody for watching. Have a great day.